we have to clock on? The appointment is for 3.15. Good, is he? Mr. Mornington has some very relevant experience in medical negligence. All right, Mrs. Gilbert. That's the ticket. All right? I was 35 and in excellent health, learning to cope with the depression of my recent divorce. Dog's Body graphic designer before marriage, divorce suddenly released me, and I had just illustrated my first children's book. What are you two giggling about? Seven <laughs> 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 out of ten! <laughs> two was enough, and I didn't want another relationship to be permanent. I was worried about staying on the pill much longer, and my memory tends to be somewhat intermittent. So I decided on sterilization. didn't exactly fill me with confidence. But it was minor, Guiney. In Wednesday, out Friday. Coagulation of the fallopian tubes is more controversial now. But it was the fashionable way of doing it in 1975. Two small incisions are made, an optical viewer and heating element inserted, and they literally fry your fallopian tubes. Mrs. Gilbert? Lavatory. Down the end and turn right. All right, Mrs. Weston. Yes, I've never fainted in my life before. Lucky you. How do you feel now? Terrible. I don't know what they put in the anaesthetic. Well, that's the damage. What? I think you'll survive, Mrs. Gilbert. 
I smiled. I felt terrible, but I smiled. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mornington wants to dispose of one or two dreary technicalities with me, Mrs. Gilbert. If you wouldn't mind waiting a little while longer. Waiting? A tiny little while longer. What is it, dear? It's such a dreadful pain. Whereabouts? Here. Where you had your operation? I suppose so, yes. You must expect a little pain after any operation, It's dear. not a little pain. Oh, no, 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 no. This won't do, will it, dear? Let's have a look-see here. See what this is all about. Mrs. Gilbert. Sometimes this operation gets you like that. It can be an emotional experience. I remember when my period stopped. I, I am was... not being emotional. I am in pain. I'll get you something for the pain, dear. She gave me two dystalgesic tablets, about the equivalent of a couple of aspirins. Oh, you tell them, love. I mean, it's your pain, not theirs. Oh, I haven't seen this one before. They must rent doctors by the day here. Yeah? Morning, Mrs. Gilbert. Good morning. How do you feel? Terrible. Bad night? Awful. The pain has been awful. Well, let's have a look at you, shall we? Here? Yeah? Yes. Is it a continuous pain? No. It builds up and then subsides for a while. Oh. Is it tender here? Yes. You've eaten nothing since the operation? No. You sit up on the edge of the bed. Don't worry. Don't worry, Mrs. Gilbert. Cough. <coughs> Again. <coughs> Fine, thank you. You're passing water all right, are you? It hurts. Discomfort. Pain. Sharp pain. Yes, I know I'm causing a fuss, but no, honestly, no. I've You're never... You're quite right to make a fuss. You must tell us how you feel. I'd like Dr. Whitemore, who did your operation, to have a look at you. I'll try and get hold of him now. If there is a delay, I'll prescribe something stronger for that pain. But I'd rather get him to see you first, all right? Yes, thank you, Doctor. Thanks. She wrote in my notes, patient in terrible condition, unable to sit, cough, or even blow her nose. Searing abdominal pain over bladder area. Severe pain when passing urine. I've no idea who she was. Her name in my notes is illegible. But she got it right. I never saw her again.
morning, Mrs. Gilbert. Hello. I gather you didn't have a very comfortable night. Not particularly, no. Where's the pain? Here. All right, I know it's tender. Sorry, you'll have to bear with me a little, I'm afraid. Thank you. Better stories than grown-up ones? I illustrated it. Oh, you draw. I draw, yes. Good. Open your mouth, please. Cough. <laughs> Good. Thank you. The operation did go quite normally, Mrs. Gilbert. Some people do have a more severe reaction than others, but there's nothing to worry about. I'll prescribe something that will stop that pain, all right? Thank you. He wrote, operation was straightforward, good for you. Not the slightest possibility of damage to other organs. I don't want the kids to see me like this. Just tell them I'm tired. I'll phone. Cards are great. Tell them. I'll phone them at Sylvia's just as soon as I leave here. Mm. This is bloody ridiculous. Yes, I'm due out tomorrow. Is it really bad, though? <gasps> We're investigating the possibility that Mrs. Gilbert may have contracted a urinary infection. A sample has been sent to the lab for testing. When will you know? Tuesday. Tuesday? The lab doesn't work over the weekend. We're doing everything we can, Mr. Chappell. Several doctors have seen Mrs. Gilbert. She's in so much pain. She's on pethidin, which is a very strong painkiller. She's worn off. Can't you give her some more? I'm very sorry. We must save the last injection till night time, so she can get some sleep. Yes, I see that, I see that, but... Uh... But she's not a moaner, sister. I know her very well. I've never seen her like this before. Are you sure that... What do you want us to do, Mr. Chappell? Open her up? No, it's not me, Dr. Brent. It's another of your patients, Mrs. Gilbert. Which Mrs. Gilbert? Kay. She's in hospital. She's had the sterilization. Ah, yes, yes. I'm worried about the treatment she's getting. She's so ill, she's in so much pain. Uh, have you talked to her doctor? No, the, uh, the ward sister. I wondered if, as uh, GP, you could help. Well, I can't intervene in the treatment she's getting in hospital. No, no, no. I understand you can't do that. Then why... Well, I... I, I just feel in such a helpless position. I, I don't know who to ask. Well, when are you seeing her again? This evening. Well, if you're still worried then... Asked to see a doctor, and don't go until you've seen one. Yes, I, I will. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Doctor. <laughs> Not at all. Goodbye, Mr. Chapel. Goodbye. I tried to escape the pain by drawing in my head. But I didn't know if this was drawing or nightmare. five months pregnant. Do 
and touch, for God's sake. Will you come here a minute, please? What's wrong? Will you come and see Mrs. Gilbert, please? Clench and unclench your fist, Mrs. Gilbert. That's fine, thank you. What is the matter with me? We suspect it's a little nasty called paralytic eyeless. Don't worry, it's not serious. Writes itself all in good time. What can happen after abdominal surgery? The guts have a fit of the sulks. It's a bit called the ileum which goes on strike and stops pushing the stuff along. So you feel pretty sick and uncomfortable for a few days. At least I know what it is. Did they wash you today? Face. Yesterday? I don't know, Maureen. Have they given you a mouthwash? No wonder you're sore if you've had all the pethidin injections in the same buttock. If that happened on my ward, they'd get the edge of my tongue. Kay? Mm. There's vomit in your hair. Well... There's certainly none left inside me. feeling, Mrs. Gilbert? The same. If you had anything to complain about, why didn't you ask for me? I understood you were not well enough to have a bed bath or your hair washed. If you want these things, you only have to ask for them, instead of complaining through a visitor. I didn't complain. Really? But I gather you're not happy with the standard of nursing on this ward. There are rather a lot of students. Most patients accept they have to be trained. However, you're being moved to A12, where I hope the nursing is nearer to your requirements. Mrs. K. Gilbert Lincoln Mycin. Mrs. K. Gilbert Lincoln Mycin. Methadone 100 milligrams. Methadone 100 milligrams. Roll over for me, Mrs. Gilbert. Mrs. Gilbert? One. I never two, know what to write. Isn't it? That's very mad. Three. Mother sends me the note paper. Four. Hoping this comes back to me. Five. <laughs> six. Twenty. Twenty. 
Staff nurse. Yes. Could you draw the curtains around my bed a little, please? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilbert. Just, I can't sleep for the light. It's not allowed, I'm sorry. I have to be able to see you. Now try and get some sleep, Mrs. Gilbert. Did you want curtains drawn? Uh, I told her that would be bad nursing. Sister Lynch said we'd have to play Mrs. Gilbert by the book. I heard her going on about it in the canteen. Leave it. I hope your nursing standards will be high enough for the lady at staff. I said leave it. <laughs> right. You can do Foster's blood pressure at two o'clock. I shall have to tell my parents about the weather again. Blood pressure, Mrs. Foster. It's light outside when it's morning, isn't it? <sighs> Nurse. Nurse. What is it, Mrs. Gilbert? Please. Could just drop the curtains a little. I'm not allowed to. Just enough to cut out the light, please. If I do that, then I won't be able to see you without getting up. I have enough to do without jumping up and down every five minutes. I'm squashed up, so I can't sleep for the pain. If you could only draw the curtains enough to get the light out of my eyes, please, please, please. Mrs. Gilbert, there are a lot of people in this hospital, far worse off than you, who don't complain half so much. It's only a small night bulb. No one else is worrying about it. And you can turn away from it if you really want to. I began to need a bedpan. I knew she would shout at me. I put it off for five minutes. Then a minute more. Then. P.S. Don't write soon, or I'll have to grind out another deadly letter. You haven't written that. Not bloody well, have I? Give it all. Write soon, love, bed. Who's bed? I am your dad, Joe. <laughs> That's what they call me. Nurse. Nurse. Sit down. Nurse. Yes, Mrs. Gilbert. Yes, Mrs. Gilbert. I'm sorry, but I've wet the bed. Nurse Thompson? Get a fresh draw sheet. Yes, you did that deliberately, didn't you? To get attention. I'm not allowed to draw the curtains. Can't you understand? Thank you. Well, that's all right. See what Mrs. Craft wants. It's all right, you're crying. You don't have to make the bed. I've met your type before. You've had a small op and the doctors can find nothing wrong with you. Oh. Other side, please. showed your kidneys are fine. It uh, might just be necessary to have another exploratory operation, Mrs. Gilbert. I hope we shan't have to. We shall just have to wait and see. Pauline 
told me, but I, I didn't expect... Have they said anything else? I thought you might fancy something light. Have you read... I'm very worried about her. We're rather concerned, too. Yes. Yes. I'm a radiographer. Are you? And I was wondering if... Where? It, um, St. Luke's. Oh, yes. I was wondering if Kay, uh, Mrs. Gilbert, could possibly have an obstruction. Only she does look like all the other patients that I've ever x-rayed for this. The, the pain, sweating, sickness... Mrs. Gilbert has ileus. Yes. Yes, I see. Only she does look like an obstruction to me. No, no, no. We've been into all that. That's not possible. I see. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Whiteman. Mrs. Gilbert was told, was it by the consultant, that you were thinking of another operation? No, no, Mr. Chappell. A second operation is totally out of the question. It might even be dangerous. She went down at half past twelve, and it's it's half past three now. She's not back yet. Look, is anything wrong? I've no information. I'm sorry. If I leave you my phone number, would you would you telephone the moment you hear anything? sure those make this afternoon's post. Nothing yet, I'm afraid. Look, she's been down there for over four hours. Now, what's happening? There's no information on the ward. We will phone you just as soon as we hear. Sure, right? Yes. Thank God for that. What, uh, what was wrong? We found that something had become attached to the small bowel during the first operation and obstructed it. We had to remove a small piece of the bowel. Is that what was... Can you hang on? Just hold the line. Is that what was causing all the pain? Yes. And she's all right? Yeah, she's all right. Well, thanks very much for ringing, Doctor. Dr. Lacey. I assisted on Mrs. Gilbert's second operation. 
I'm sorry to have to tell you that she's very ill. She's been suffering from acute peritonitis caused by an intestinal obstruction. By the time we operated, unfortunately, gangrene had set in and we had to remove a large part of her small bowel. I understood from Whitemore it was a comparatively minor thing. I'm afraid not. We found that all but four feet of the small bowel were gangrenous and had to be removed. Look, I think it is absolutely scandalous that this hospital has allowed this to happen. It's extremely unfortunate, but it has happened. And what we must concentrate on now is Mrs. Gilbert's survival. Her chances are about 50-50. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Awfully sorry to have kept you. Mrs. Gilbert, this is Mr. Point. You're connected with Mrs. Gilbert? A friend. Normally one just sees the litigant, you see. This sort of interview is rather like doctor and patient. Mr. Chapel. It's an unfortunate analogy. Really? Mrs. Gilbert's faith in the doctor-patient relationship isn't quite what it was. Oh. I'd like Mr. <laughs> Chapel to be present. He's had some experience of this kind of thing. Would you follow me? Out of the chambers, up the flight of stairs on your right. Room marked private, just beyond the waiting room. One of the uh, consequences of the operation. Really? Tragic. It is tragic. Quite young, too. 36. And you just had from the Regional Health Authority their formal denial of negligence. Yes. There's your notes we've just been through. Your friend's notes, all very valuable. But your case really rests on the expert opinion you obtained from your specialist after leaving hospital, Mr... Phillips. Yeah. It's doctor against doctor that matters. The regional health authority will produce an expert who will testify there was no negligence. All Mr. Phillips is prepared to say is there is no evidence the operation wasn't competent. But they were totally, absolutely incompetent. You think that? And I can fully understand your feelings. But you must not let your feelings sway your judgment, Mrs. Gilbert. The delay in making the right diagnosis, that's supported here. Is it? Page two, last paragraph. There is some justification in the patient's claim that the diagnosis was delayed so long that resection of a large part of the small intestine was necessary. Some justification. Even here he's hedging his bets, isn't he? If the mesentery was damaged by coagulation at the time of sterilization, earlier intervention would not have prevented the gangrene. But perhaps she could then suggest that the operation had not been carried out with due care and attention. She can suggest it. But he's already said there's no evidence it wasn't. The nursing side? Ah, yes. Now, I'm much more hopeful of picking up something there. Your friend who's a nurse, there's her testimony. That looks sound. And we could take a statement from you, Mrs. Gilbert, on the night nurse incident. You're very clear and incisive there. You mean we could get damages for that? I think we could reach a settlement for the other side on that, yes. What sort of a settlement? A few hundred pounds? Mr. Mornington, I don't think you can understand my circumstances. I have two small children. I have 50 pounds a week maintenance to live on. I can't work because of what they did to me. I am frequently ill. Sometimes I can scarcely look after myself, let alone the children. And you're telling me that all I'm entitled to is a few hundred pounds? I'm telling you that's all you'll get from litigation. But those doctors were responsible for this. For other people's sake, as well as mine, they must be made to pay. Mrs. Gilbert, I do sympathize with the terrible experience you've been through. But diagnosis is always difficult, often controversial, and you must not become so 
Vindictive. That you become involved in a hopeless loss. Vindictive. <laughs> a radiographer friend told them it was like every case of obstruction she'd ever x-rayed. But they go on and on in the teeth of all the evidence, all my pain, believing it is something minor that will right itself. They even try and convince me it isn't pain I'm feeling, but a slight discomfort, because that's the right symptom for what they have decided I have. And this goes on and on and on and on for five days, until I'm in such bloody agony that they have to open me up. And they find such a mess in there that it's beyond their wretched competence to deal with. So they have to call in a specialist surgeon who happens to be around. And if he hadn't been around, I would have died! Vindictive. Of course I'm vindictive. Now, please, may I borrow your key again? Well, we tried. We'll take a taxi to my car. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, it's only ten minutes, thank you. Well, don't be too downhearted, will you? I'll be in touch, Mrs. Gilbert. specifically set up to protect doctors against actions like yours. So your main weapon has got to be somebody who's part of that establishment, like Phillips. I'm, I'm sure there's far more in this report that he's done on you than that barrister got out of it. But I'm not sure. Until you've clarified all the technicalities, I can't go any further, can we? Debbie came in while I was taping up my stomach this morning. I'd forgotten to lock the door. Is it healing? <sighs> when the gut came through after the second op, it left a hole. That long and that wide. You can't see how deep it is. And it's still discharging. Am I attracting you? When Debbie came in, I almost hit the roof. Sorry, and you want some? Please. I shall have to find myself a man who has a fetish for women with a hole in their stomach who fart like brass bands. Make a bit on the side. Do you want to see it? Not particularly, no. <laughs> Not particularly. <laughs> There's a hole in my stomach, dear David, dear David. There's a hole in my stomach. In my stomach. A hole. We 
we are finished, aren't we? Yes. Thank you for saying that. Don't say any more. I need you so desperately for this. But I had to get the other out of the way first. Fortunately, nothing appeals to me less at the moment. One of my pet horrors is movie hero. Swanning over to beautiful fiancé reduced by car crash to human vegetable. I'm saying this changes nothing, darling. Are you taking these for the cooking? Yes, I'm this. I drop them back with a medical dictionary. Go, quick. I can feel my brass band beginning to tune up. Ischemic. I Let S me. Oh, for God's sake. D All right. There. S. I S C H A E M I C. I C. Means lacking blood. Anemic. What's that? White. If blood doesn't get to something in your body, it, it doesn't feel very well. Is that what happened to you? Yes. It's unusual for the bowel to become is whatever it is. Unless what? the mesentery becomes twisted from a partial volvulus. M E S. E N T E R Y. Hang on. M E S what? E N T E R Y. E S E N. Why don't you draw it? When the gut contracts. The mesentery, which is a blanket-like membrane carrying its blood supply, is pulled along with it, and in this case, sticks to the still gluey fallopian tube. The gut continues contracting, but because it's restricted, twists itself right over, kinks the blood vessels, thus cutting off the blood supply to the gut, to a part of the gut, which then dies. If that's what happened, Whitemore can't be blamed. This part of the bowel lies close to the fallopian tube and its mesentery is coagulated with it when Whitemore switches on the heat. Definitely Whitemore's fault. But Phillips has said the operation was competent. No, you haven't. Oh. He's written... There is no evidence that the operation was carried out in any way but a competent manner. 
There is no evidence. Don't you see? The gangrene destroyed all the evidence. See, Phillips wouldn't get first prize in a plain English competition, but it's perfectly logical. After two weeks with a, with a medical dictionary, <laughs> it's giving you an either or. Either it was the operation that was incompetent, or the diagnosis afterwards was incompetent. And either way, I think Phillips is worth another visit. <gasps> What's he like? Oh, I don't know. They all merge into one after a time. One thing. I was doing my usual vindictive about doctor's act. When he said, what did I think about Letts, the man who did the second op? My first instinct was to say, oh, to hell with anyone to do with a Brockburn. But I found myself saying he saved my life. And afterwards, he was always kind, I added, somewhat grudgingly. <laughs> Thank God I did. Because it turned out later, he and Phillips are great friends. <laughs> well, he seems to be on your side. But, with friends at the Brockburn, the question is how far is he prepared to go? The barrister we consulted. There are just um, one or two things in your report that are troubling our excellent lawyers. Oh? Are you saying that Mrs. Gilbert was never suffering from paralytic ileus, as the Brockman doctors diagnosed it? The second operation showed what she was suffering from. But were her symptoms those of paralytic ileus? At the beginning, they could have been taken to indicate ileus. But what would I have felt like if it had been that? Ileus? most commonly happens after an operation uh, where the whole abdominal cavity has been opened up. The intestine reacts to the disturbance by going on strike. The stomach does not empty and the contents of the large bowel are not propelled forwards. If you had been suffering from ileus, uh, you would have felt considerable discomfort your abdomen would have been distended and there would have been some nausea and vomiting. And ileus is not a common complication of the sterilization that you had uh, since the operation is performed through the navel or a small incision. One of the main points in its favor is that there's no disturbance of the intestines. So if there is, uh, one must ask why. Uh, that is point one. Point two, one cannot see a patient's pain, but one can see its effects, like fainting. As opposed to ileus, acute intestinal obstruction is always associated with pain, uh, frequently severe and usually in bouts or spasms. Point three, the vomit uh, will be gastric contents initially, but as the system tries to clear itself through the only exit now available to it, it will become dark green and then brown uh, with an unmistakable smell. Point four. As the condition progresses, the patient may be sweating profusely. Skin cold, temperature subnormal. Point five. If a doctor makes a diagnosis of paralytic ileus, when there is any possibility of there being an obstruction, it is important that he makes frequent assessments, as the first clears up within two or three days, and the outcome of the second, if not treated, is usually fatal. Dr. Whitemore, who was responsible for you, did not see you for Four days. Point six, Mr. Charles Letts, who performed the second operation, and as you say, saved your life, is a recognized authority on the diagnosis and treatment of intestinal obstruction. It is astonishing that he was not called upon to give his opinion much earlier. Weren't they in the same department? 
No, they were not. <clears throat> oh, I see. The first operation was done by the gynecologists. You think there was negligence then, Mr. Phillips? Well, of course there was negligence. You haven't said so in your report. Haven't I? No. Oh. I thought I'd made that perfectly clear. So, you see, Mr. Ferguson, there may have been some interdepartmental rivalry if they weren't prepared to call in a specialist from their own hospital until I was at death's door. We might even be able to get a statement from him. Mr. Letts. Well, perhaps, Mrs. Gilbert. It certainly sounds encouraging. Doesn't it? I shall have to see him myself. What matters is what he's prepared to testify to and how strongly counsel regards it. He was quite, quite clear it was negligence. Good, good. Good. Well, perhaps this is the moment to bring up the problem that's always with us. Money. But I paid you £250 on account. Swallowed up, I'm afraid. Conference with counsel, meetings with uh, Mr. Phillips, and the taking of his appeal. How much do you want? Another two hundred and fifty pounds should keep it ticking over, Mrs. Gilbert. Is that all? Well, that should certainly cover extraneous fees. Conference with counsel and expert medical opinion. I'm not concerned about our own charges at this stage. I haven't two hundred and fifty pounds. Ah. In fact, I've no money left at all. Ah. What does that mean? What? Ah. You know I only have my maintenance to live on. I haven't worked since I went into hospital. All my savings are used up. That is, uh, rather difficult. Oh, Mr. Ferguson, I only wish it were difficult. From where I'm sitting, it looks bloody impossible. What is the one about the impossible taking a little longer? I, I, I do appreciate your problem, Mrs. Gilbert, but I explained to you the basis on which we have to undertake litigation. You see, if you did manage to obtain legal aid, then the legal aid certificate would not be retrospective. You told me I didn't qualify for legal aid. Well, I'm dubious about it, but it's worth trying. In your circumstances, you can't lose anything. And if I don't qualify? A case runs on money like a car on petrol. If you don't fill the tank... Uh, but that's good news about Mr. Phillips, Mrs. Gilbert. That is good news. Yes. Very nice to talk to you, Mrs. Gilbert. Nice to talk to you, Mr. Ferguson. God. The kids! I forgot about Fiona. Hello. We're lost. I'm sorry. I 
Joe's on the phone. I'm cold. Oh. What a nice house. It's a school. School. Hello, Fiona. Hello, Mrs. Gilbert. Have you forgotten about me? Of course I haven't forgotten about you. Don't be silly. I was supposed to be home early today. I'm sorry. I was on the phone. To your lover? Unfortunately not. To my solicitor. Well, no. He's not exactly giving me any money at the moment. <laughs> ah. What's the matter? Oh, dear. <sighs> Mummy's got a new white car. Has she? Oh, nice. She says no one must drop anything inside it. She's quite right, of course. It's a disgusting habit to get into. Well, Mo may be an old, rather non-white car, but at least... Come on, Mo! Mo, Mo, Mo! Mo, 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 Mo! It stops! Hooray! What's for tea, Mo? It's a surprise. Baked beans. Don't be cynical, Deborah Gilbert. What's cynical? When Mummy's lying and I tell the truth. Don't call me a liar. Well, what is it then? What would you like? They see, see. Sausages, moo, moo. You and your sausages. Sausages, sausages, sausages. All right, I'll pass by the. Mummy, Mummy, the light. <laughs> You stupid, stupid woman. My children in the car. Kay Gilbert, 30 Mansell Street. Do you realise what you've done? I'm entirely responsible for this. Please, take my number. I must get home, please. What are you doing? Hey! It wasn't horrible. I banged my knee. What a pig. Pig, pig. We'll make him into sausages. Sausages, sausages. We'll chop him up and make him into Oil. I expect I'm burning oil. Sausage shop coming. Sausage, sausage, it's sausage. a poo smell. Don't use that word. Someone's done a really horrible poo. Fiona. Not me. Not me. It's you. But it's not me. Sausages, sausages, sausages. Sausages, 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 sausages. Be quiet. Other way. Take Richard inside. Do. I'll be in in a minute. Pull the key out a little when you turn it. Go inside.
Number 56, room one. 56, room one. down, Mrs. Gilbert. You're divorced? I'm divorced. Your maintenance is your sole source of income? Yes. Do you own your own house? I live in my ex-husband's. Uh, whose name is on the title deeds? His. Do you have any form of capital, cash, savings, investment? No, none. Jewellery? Well, just the usual stuff. Do you know the value of your ring? This? Yes. But that's my engagement ring. I'm afraid we have to take everything into account. Uh, what was the purchase price? So long ago. Uh, approximately. You mean you'd expect me to sell that? It's not me, Mrs. Gilbert. It has to be assessed. £150. You bought it in 1966, May. This uh, rate demand is for six months only. Yes, I'm sorry. I haven't got all the papers. I've just been in hospital. The rates are twice that. 83 to room three. 83, room three. There's one point I would like to make. My maintenance. It's split three ways. A third for me and a third for each of the two children. Surely you should only count my income. Otherwise, if I don't get aid, I'll be forced to gamble my children's money. I just make the assessment, Mrs. Gilbert. The decision is made by the Law Society. I can't find that second-rate demand. Oh, for goodness sake! It's not there. I pay them twice a year. The rates are twice that figure. I need the second half rate demand for the application to be complete. Legal aid provision. You can't even provide lavatories for the people who use this bloody place. I have received a letter from the Law Society saying that your application for legal aid has been refused on the grounds that the Supplementary Benefits Commission has determined your disposable income at an amount greater than £1,790 per annum and I await your further instructions as per our recent conversation. It's not enough. You need a barrister. I am a barrister. So we'll get rid of him. He didn't grasp Phillips' report. Is he going to do any better when it's spelled out to him? It just never occurred to me that you fired barristers. <laughs> Half of them live on. Well, I've been asking around. There's a man called Brumston. He's been involved in a couple of important medical negligence cases. Sounds good. There's only one side. He's just been made a QC. It's not much, but... I'm not borrowing any more from you. Someone asked me today when I, I was throwing the car on the heap because he was interested in it for the spare parts. I don't open bills anymore. What's the point? The roof leaks, the kids' shoes leak, I leak. And you suggest I hire one of the most expensive barristers in town? <laughs> yes, Mr. Ferguson, you did hear me correctly. This is the most serious step to take, Mrs. Gilbert. I must advise you. Mr. Ferguson, I didn't phone you up for advice. I phoned you up to tell you to contact Mr. Brunston. It is not as simple as that. You cannot ferry the case from one barrister to another like that. This can only complicate matters and delay matters still further. To, I mean, to say nothing of the escalation in costs. I, you really must consider. Mr. Ferguson, will you please consider? It is now ten months 
since I went into that hospital, and seven months since you have been actively involved, and I'm sick and tired of considering ethics and niceties and formalities and technicalities. All I want to consider now is action. If you want to continue to act for me, will you please do as I ask? And now you really must excuse me. Deborah! Oh, and by the way, expense is now no object. Deborah, bucket, back room! came through from Bill's bank account this morning. I thought he could only just manage the maintenance. I never told him how bad I really was. I had visions of him flying over from America and taking the kids. He wouldn't, but I couldn't stand the thought. Where did he get it from? He took out a second mortgage. On what? The house. But your house? <coughs> you know, I wake up with screaming nightmares that I'm going to lose even my leaky roof. But I'm not going to let them get away with it. I'm not. I'm not. I've um, been in touch with Mr. Mornington. He's been good enough to allow me to give you an opinion on this matter. We can only go forward on a basis of medical opinion. And medical opinion alone. What you think, or I think, or your friends who visited you in a hospital think is of no importance. The only point I can advise you on is whether the um, medical evidence Mr. Phillips can produce amounts to negligence. Are you clear about that? Yes, well, there are things here that I am uh, far from clear about. I think that's uh, finally penetrated. There may have been negligence during the operation to cause this intestinal obstruction or negligence afterwards in diagnosing it. I see little prospect of the former, though. Um, it can be held in reserve. No, we stand or fall by your alleged negligence in diagnosis. Would you say that uh, Mrs. Gilbert developed the obstruction immediately after the operation? Yes. The fainting was the first clue. Well, who do we go for? Hmm? I mean, who out of this uh, committee of doctors was responsible for the aftercare? Well, the doctor who performed the operation. Not his consultant. Well, it's arguable. But uh, I go for Whitemore, who led the charge in saying it was Ileus. Mm. Yes, Ileus rectifies itself in 48 to 72 hours. Hours, four days at most. First operation was Thursday noon, Friday, Saturday, Sunday noon. You would have been alarmed by Sunday. Oh, much, much earlier. The symptoms collectively pointed to obstruction. But Mr. Phillips, they had an x-ray done on the Saturday. Look, they've written in the notes, x-ray shows ileus. Perhaps they saw what they were looking for. You haven't seen them? No. We must get those. Uh, second operation, Tuesday. When do you think it should have been done? No later than Saturday. Most of the small bowel could have been saved. Every hour was vital. Well, this may be complex, but the law is quite clear. The court must be satisfied that no reasonably competent doctor or doctors would have diagnosed paralytic ileus under these circumstances or acted upon that diagnosis in this way. Are you saying that? Yes. Whitemore was incompetent. Yes. The other doctors, they were all incompetent? No. But they had to defer to Whitemore and his consultant. I see, but you're an expert in the bowel, aren't you? I mean, you know these symptoms backwards. So should a husband. Certainly a senior registrar. You have absolutely no doubts about that? None whatsoever. It was as obvious as that. The Whitemore's probably done two or three hundred of these sterilizations. I think that he was so convinced that nothing could have gone wrong that it prevented him from seeing that it had. And other people. There may be sufficient here for an action of medical negligence. It rests entirely on you. 
It's one thing to write a report like this, quite another to go into open court. Call a fellow doctor incompetent. Affect his future career. And criticize a whole hospital department. Are you uh, prepared to do that? Yes, I'm prepared to do that. But the case will not be defended. I was speaking this morning to a member of the Medical Defense Union, which of course represents Dr. Whitemore. And uh, it was my impression that they had no intention of defending the action. Well, that's uh, useful to know. <laughs> Nevertheless, I have been in court in a number of actions which were never going to be defended, so we can put that out of our minds. I can't put it out of mine. There never has been any defence to my case, has there? It won't help to pursue this, Mrs. Gilbert. We all appreciate what you've been through. No, you do not. How can you? Ever since this started, people have been appreciating my situation and understanding my problems when they've no idea at all what I've been through and no idea at all what my problems are. Now I can see how it works. The whole object has been to starve me out. Well, how else would you describe it? To see whether I was too ill to claim or took bad advice or just ran out of money? I suppose it pays off most of the time, helps to keep the claims down on the health service. How many people are there in my position who give up or never ever get started when they have perfectly good cases? I'm more grateful than I can ever say to you for supporting me. And to you, Mr. Brunston, but please, don't say you appreciate what I've been through. You're speaking, Mrs. Gilbert, as if we're at the end of the road. From my point of view, I've hardly begun. That, Mr. Brunston, is what worries me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 